Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video, we are doing something very different than I've ever done on this channel before. I've kind of stayed away from doing like celebrity react things on YouTube. The main reason for that is that sometimes I find react videos can be a little mean, especially if the person's really nice and has never, you know, seems like a perfectly nice, great person. And the last thing I think like if I was that person, um, would I want to, you know, watch some dude in his living room make fun of me on YouTube. But I'm going to make an exception for this one because this particular person or this particular mansion is a 500 million dollar reportedly mansion that has been uh, frequently requested by you all for me to react to because it is sort of the douchiest mansion I think you could possibly imagine and so I thought that I would make a rare exception and um, discuss it on this channel. Hopefully we can like learn some things about design as well along the way about maybe we'll be inspired by some interesting things in this home. Maybe there will be some not awesome things that I can also give you my thoughts on in this video. So let's get to the reaction of this tour of the one, the most expensive mansion apparently in all of Los Angeles, which is probably saying something. Let's get to it. It's some intense music. By the way, so it's reportedly valued at $500 million, but it recently sold for like 120 or something like that. So, um, that's not quite the same number, but we're gonna run with that. Oh, Jesus. First reaction. Uh, this is quite an obnoxiously huge house. I think that sometimes like, there is such a thing as too big, okay? There's no legitimate sustainable reason for you to have this much space. I don't care if you have, maybe like if you have 60 children um, and they're all their family staying with you and you're basically running a hotel at that point. I don't, there's no real reason to have a house this big. It's just obnoxiously huge. And um, that's my first reaction looking just at the uh, exterior is from a sustainability perspective, I'm angry, but let's, let's move on. The most epic of epic videos. We are at the largest house in the urban world. When I say the largest, it is 105,000 square feet. It is called The One. And what gets better than that, we are with The One. The one and only Niall, who is the visionary behind this. He built this and he is just an incredible guy. And he's gonna show us you. around this house that no cameras have seen this house before in its entirety. Ever, ever, ever. Is that correct? That's right. So this you is a first world like view. We're in for a treat. Let's, Let's, do do it. It. Let's do it. Let me show you. Come on. Whoa. Guys, sure. I have never been in this house before. This is the first time walking through the door. Adam has never been in this house before. And Okay, so my first reaction on the uh, interior, I think I know, I've seen little tiny clips of this home before and this really feels like it's an extremely modern design. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of natural light, so let's give that, um, that's great. Uh, you have a lot of natural light. It's very white, it's very museum-like, and to me that reads as very cold. I'll also say I'm not a really big fan of um, ceramic tiles on the floor. Or is this marble? Knowing the price tag, actually, why am I even, there's nothing ceramic or porcelain or anything about this. This is probably sh slabs of marble on the floor. You know, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. And again, like, marble is a wonderful material. Let's make sure that it's marble for a second, hold on. All the, a lot of the artwork we have, the sculpture done original for this house. This artwork here is from Michael Phelps. It's called Unity and it was made for the house. Like it the swimmer? 360 degrees. Probably not. This foyer, because there's so many seating areas in the house, this foyer, foyer is a true foyer. It's like an art gallery. Sorry, just a quick sidestep. Do Americans say foyer? To me, it's a foyer. Anyway, irrelevant. This foyer is the size of most luxury mansions. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Let me show you over here. A two-story office with an office balcony. So, okay, I'm very sure that the floors are made of slabs of marble, which, again, it's extremely expensive 
Um, it's not particularly, it's, it's not a warm and inviting choice. And I think that's especially when looking at uh, something like a foyer, which uh, to me, I would like to create something that is a little bit more warm and inviting. And that is often where I think engineered hardwood, or if you're gonna use luxury vinyl plank or something, I mean, they're not gonna use vinyl plank in this floor, but you know, even just using hardwood floors, it just gives a real sense of like life and warmth to a space that you're not gonna get from stone slabs. So I love marble. It is a beautiful material. You know that I love a natural stone. On the floor, especially with the white walls, to me, it just reads really cold and uh, not particularly inviting, in my opinion. I picked out every single thing in this house, every paint color, every stone, every tile, all of the furniture, all of this was all my idea, like to keep it warm and supple. Oof, again, I'm gonna say this does not warm and supple. Um, are not words that I would have reached for with this space. I think it reads as very cold and distant and like a museum, in my opinion. Again, there's a lot of really hard surfaces, very little in the way of what I would actually deem to be warm materials. Everything on the color wheel just reads really cold. Again, I'm seeing a lot of like, blues, grays, rather than say orange tones or warmer tones. Uh, this definitely leans on the cooler side. So he does have some gold and some yellow, I guess little pops of some like sort of yellowish green that I saw there that maybe lean a little bit on the warmer side, but that's the, this is a very cool palette. So um, I personally uh, would have liked to have seen a little bit more warmth there and not even just, just a little bit more texture in the material choices as well. It's very flat, it's very hard. So that's personally not really my taste but I mean it's not completely tragic for this this price point it, I wouldn't t pay 127 million dollars for it even if I had that but um let's keep going this is a elevator I'm assuming elevators I think there's six elevators six and, elevators you know I'm I'm a big developer I I have built a lot of houses no houses like this but I've learned over time that we really need to start sustaining and trying to do things where we don't just waste um so this is one thing that that we found all of my flowers are artificial but you could never tell. Right, I, I thought they were real. Yep. And, and, I, I, I really and, 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 and it's good real. because it's a bigger cost at first, but then you don't they need to feel real. You don't need to worry about them staining and dropping and you don't need to worry about sustainability. Okay, I'm a little bit shocked that you can talk about having six elevators in a 100,000 square foot home and tout your sustainability um, at the same time. I think that's a little more than a stretch. I think it's, let's just say artificial plants was is not how what I personally would have reached for when it comes to talking about sustainability. I think if you build a house like this, I think you just have to flat out say, I don't care about sustainability. I think you just can't fake it with some fake plants to sort of virtue signal that you actually care about a topic that you clearly don't care about. I mean, you know, I mean, there's an empty quarry in Italy from all the marble that you've put in this 100,000 square foot home, not to mention six elevators. There's nothing sustainable about this home. Who's supposed to live here? Like how this is excess to the point of grotesque. And let's just be honest about that. But. Okay, let's continue the tour. Spectacular. <laughs> so the next room we're gonna to come to is the dining room. We have one of two wine cellars here. This is not completed yet. But Who needs the, one when you can have two? For the Jerobombs or bigger. So these are all for the large format wines. I've never been in here before. <laughs> Very sustainable. What and the then the, 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 the bigger bottles will be here all the way up. And it's all temperature controlled. Unbelievable. There'll be a- um, It a is unbelievable. Ladder. These are the best lights I've ever seen. Well, ever. and you know, when I was when we had these lights delivered, these were on a semi truck, and I mean, they look big, but you have no idea how big they look when they yeah, get yeah. Like, because you have so much natural light. Okay, so I don't like those chandeliers. I think this is a very glam look, which um, if you've seen my trends, I'm over part two. What did I? T I feel like one of my videos I've talked about. I don't remember what I say in half of my videos, to be honest. At this point, listen, the glam look is very popular amongst people that really want you to know that they have a lot of money. And um, to me, sometimes, you know, usually it sometimes is really expensive, like slabs of marble. Sometimes people lean on, you know, sequins and, and 
fake jewels to sort of make it look like it's more glamorous and fancy than it is. I think that using really natural, beautiful materials doesn't necessarily mean that they have to scream at how expensive they are. Those chandeliers, in my opinion, um, are a little too crystal, a little bit too glammy for my personal taste. Um, you know, it looks like you're in a really beautiful setting and you've got so much natural light in that home. Like, I personally would have loved to have seen a little bit more of a connection between the outdoors and the inn, in my opinion. This looks like a house that's completely divorced itself from nature, even though obviously the, the connection between the indoors and outdoors is there physically, but in terms of the design and the materials chosen, um, I don't get that at all from this house. This is, this is it, unbelievable. There's 20 chairs around this table. So we have another, another art piece. All of these are made overseas with, with, with our designs. How did you get this in here? Now? It was very difficult. Well, we had, the, we had the circles made and then we had a local artists come and weld the circles and then buff all of the circles. Uh, in my opinion, the most beautiful part of this home is not the home, it's the views. The natural surroundings of this site in the middle of Los Angeles or in a really obviously very expensive, beautiful part of Los Angeles, that is what makes anything about this livable and beautiful in my opinion. And again, I know you're probably sick of me talking about how this house is completely unsustainable, but getting massive metal rings that are made overseas um, Again, like you can't talk about sustainability and then have the rings and whatever and all your art sculptures shipped in from all corners of the world and uh, expect me not, not to comment on it. So anyways, I'll shut up about that. Clearly this house is not sustainable. That is the whole Getty right in front of you. This is another elevator. This is the main elevator. We have two powder rooms here. All the doors here are electric, so you push the button, they all open automatically. This is really cool. This is the smoking room, the cigar room, and I did special ventilation here. I don't, I don't smoke cigars, but um, <laughs> Look at this, this it has all vintage Playboys. Nothing says class quite like displaying your pornography. You know, the addition of a smoking room is an interesting choice. Um, that feels a bit out of date for me, uh, just if people need to smoke, which fine, personal choice, go outside to one of the many, many uh, outdoor areas that you have available for them. Yeah, again, tip, don't don't display pornography. Just a little hot tip for you all. Keep that to yourself. This is not the main kitchen. No, this is probably no one will ever use. And this is one of the five swimming pools? Yeah, there's seven total swimming pool water features total. This is the main pool. It has an infinity on three sides. This is a hot tub. And beyond this, I'll show you what we talked about earlier. This is the running track. That's a real running track. Yeah. Uh, okay, so there's a nightclub in the house, which tells you a lot about the priorities, I think, for the home. Listen. I don't love going to nightclubs on a good day. I especially don't want one in my home because I think one of the best parts about going to a nightclub is then you get to come home and you don't have to stay there any longer. Um, but to have one in your own home, oh my God, you would just be constantly like, when are these people gonna leave? And then you realize you build a stupid nightclub in your home, so they're never gonna leave. They're gonna be there until five in the morning. Uh, listen, in terms of the design, I'm actually, this is like reasonable, this is understated. Like it's just kind of really sort of basic. I thought that he would probably do a little bit more creative work, I think I thought in a, in a nightclub in this home, but actually he just went for a really basic blue and gray color scheme. Again, he's really leaned on those cooler colors, um, which can be really beautiful, but, um, but he's again, trying to go for something that's very glamorous and trying to make something look really a lot more expensive than it might and which to me feels like it's trying too hard to be expensive but I wouldn't see when it's not because it clearly is expensive um, but sometimes I think when something is just really cool and gray and there's no natural materials it can look really basic I just don't think it's um, very personal and friendly or to be honest with you just like particularly creative I think there's a lot of really beautiful creative nightclubs that are out there if you wanted to create one for his home and I suppose it ties in well with the rest of his design for the rest of the home, but this what doesn't feel particularly um, interesting or creative. Me, because there were hundreds of people who made this possible, but yes, it was me in the very beginning with a pen, with Paul designing this house. And Sorry, I just want to highlight that he said there's a lot of people that made this happen. It wasn't just me, but it was me. Love the humility. You know, the reason that the house is the size that it is is not because 
that was our goal. But we Why took 40 feet off of the mountain to make the lot, the lot bigger. So then we had to create usable space to make the grass above you have grass. So that's why all of the rooms that you're in now have usable space above you. And that's why it was so hard, but that's why it became that square footage. Okay, I didn't, did you understand that? Um, because it was on the side of the mountain, he needed the upper floor or the roof to have enough green. And so that's why it's the footprint that it is. That's why the size of the home is 100,000 square feet. I didn't buy that logic. I will say that the little conversation pit thing um, inside the water area, first of all, it's not accessible for a lot of people, but then again, I'm sure accessibility is not his primary concern in his nightclub slash home. But it is kind of cool, um, I guess. Is it a feature that I would have in my home? No, uh, no matter how much money I had, I wouldn't do that. But I think it's, I guess, kind of interesting. Um, you only probably make sense for people that can get in and out of that. But um, yeah, I mean, I guess kind of neat, but probably not a feature that I think is um, beautiful or should go in anybody else's home, but this weird home that is unique, I'll give them that. The house in itself is only 35,000 square feet, which is big. Only. But only. comparatively to 105. But then when you take the lower level and the garage, it's 50,000. I gave them everything here. Like we have a 50 car garage. I have an You've never eight. seen one of those. These are the urinals. And I'm gonna have cameras here looking at the guys. You're gonna have cameras? Cameras looking at the guys putting the image in the girl's bathroom. Out of the box thinking. That's a normal thing like a, a guy would do. Now I'm thinking like the girl. Okay, so I don't, think I need to explain this, but I, I, I'm not saying I'm an expert in California law, but that's that's got to be illegal. Like you, cameras in the men's urinal pointing so that it's live streaming to the woman's bathroom next door. I mean, it's a private residence, but it's still got to be a crime, right? Like there's no way that that's legal. It's unethical for sure. And um, I shouldn't have to comment and say this is a bad idea, but apparently I do. This is a, this guy's a creep. I don't, I don't like this house. I don't like anything about this house. This has got to be the worst part of the house though, is cameras in the bathroom. Men, women, I don't care. No cameras in the bathroom, obviously. In the back for a minute, you know? <laughs> Mate, we're in a nightclub in a house. Oh, let's chuckle. Is... Taking photos and videos of people's private parts when they're not consenting is hilarious. But my favorite part of this house is the house's ability to change the world. That's my favorite part. Um, this house isn't changing the world, except that it is probably one of the most obnoxious homes I've ever seen. This started out as a design video, but I feel like this has turned into a commentary on excesses of the rich. So I will just say this, like money doesn't buy you taste. You know what they, you know, like they say, right? Like money can buy you fashion, but it can't necessarily buy you style. And listen, everybody is entitled to their own style. This guy obviously has his, um, and this style, this home has its own uh, unique style, but it just feels very obnoxious to me. And um, yeah, I don't really like it. Okay, so Sometimes it's really good to recognize other people's style. We tend to like surround ourselves with things that we tend to like. So like I follow on Instagram people whose style I typically sort of resonate with. I follow other YouTubers that maybe have sort of a similar style to me. And sometimes it's really important, I think, to see other people's perspectives and other people's styles because it really helps you hone in on what you like and what you don't like, which I do think is also really valuable information. The fact that those three guys can walk through that home and go, I can't see a single thing about that home that I don't like, really shows to me that my perspective sometimes is limited to homes that I really like. Like sometimes I think, God, I just love so much about design, but it's because I surround myself with design that I like. If I had to end here on like a positive note and talk about areas of this house that I actually really enjoy, it's all to do with the out outdoor space. It's everything to do with the nature. There's a lot of um, really big, tall, beautiful windows, which I think do a really good job of highlighting the best feature of the home, which is its setting, which is its 
in a gorgeous area in a hillside area of Los Angeles somewhere and uh, they've done a really good job of I guess capturing sort of the big blue skies and the gorgeous sunshine a lot of that outdoor space that you're gonna get in LA and I'm sure it cost a bazillion dollars to put in all that marble and all that stonework but in my opinion it just doesn't work because it's not particularly interesting or dynamic it's very flat very hard thanks all for watching this video this is a very different type of video I hope you kind of enjoyed this react and didn't think I was being too harsh if the guy sees this video I'm sorry that I don't like your home you have different tastes than I do that's okay um, but um, good luck with your next build and I'll be there to react to it maybe uh, thanks all I'll see you all in the next video thanks bye